Great. Well, hello, everyone. Um, it is such a joy to see your faces. We work for months getting ready, um, getting ready for this. And so I'm so glad that you're all here. I'm Sue Godfrey. I've been in your inbox quite a bit. And um, I'm joined by two of my colleagues. Kate Weber um, works with me here in the Ball State Foundation um, in alumni, well, on the strategy and engagement team. And she's here helping me um, helping me with everything really all the time. Um, as is Phelan Smith. Um, Phelan's our back end, making sure that we don't have any technical problems today. So colleagues, Kate Weber um, works with me here in the Ball State Foundation um, in alumni, well, on the strategy and engagement team. And she's here helping me um, helping me with everything really all the time. Um, as is Phelan Smith, um, Phelan's our back end, making sure that we don't have any technical problems today. So thank you both for being here. So here's our agenda for today. So welcome. Um, so glad that you're here. We're also going to talk through five things that every mentor match needs to know. Uh, attended one of our trainings before, you know that we like to call them micro trainings. So it's our hope to keep things brief, um, to give you the most impact for as in as quick of time as possible. And then we share a lot of resources um, on the Cardinals Connect platform. So we'll give you a little bit of info on that, um, as well as have breakout room toward the end where you'll have a couple questions to consider and be able to meet your mentor mentee if they're here, um, but also ch chat with others who are in the program um, if your match doesn't happen to be here. We know that there's no perfect time. So uh, we're here and then we'll wrap up with questions. We expect to be done about a quarter till. Um, if not sooner. So thanks for being here. So five things every mentor match needs to know. Keep them this very high level, like I said. Um, and our first, oh, let me move you. Yes. So our first point of the five things that every mentor match needs to know, so mentor match means both mentor and mentee, is the mentoring's inherently human and personal. We bring our whole selves to mentoring, our backgrounds, our history, um, our assumptions, and we do bring our hopes and our futures, both mentors and mentees. It's easy to think that mentoring is only for the mentee. Um, I've talked to a lot of mentees who think, well, I'm just a burden or I don't want to bother them. And the fact is that both people in a mentoring pair bring their, their humanity and bring um, their person our brains are built for connection. It's powerful, but it also can be scary. And so um, mentoring's inherently human and personal, regardless of whether you're a CEO or a 20 year old student, we come to mentoring as human beings seeking connection. And mentoring addresses our, our basic need of belonging. When I think about this, I always think of the Maslow's hierarchy that I learned in high school in uh, psychology with um, safety being the most basic need, but that sense of belonging and connection being one of the basic needs that we are looking for. And mentoring is a way to do that, um, to make that kind of connection and have belonging. Um, and I bring up the inherently human and personal before the sense of belonging, even though they're very similar, but just as a reminder that both the mentor and the mentee are bringing their humanity and have a need for belonging. Um, one of the things that we find in mentoring, one of the major reasons that um, mentor matches might not work is that one or the other feels like the other person in the match doesn't need or want them. And that's, um, it's amazing to me, even important people, people who we think are very important, will um, will report like just feeling yucky if the match doesn't work out. And so it's, I just, I bring this up as a reminder, um, particularly to our students that, um, that our mentors are looking, looking forward to this and looking to make that human connection. Um, and being a good mentor or mentee is really based around the very practical life skills that are associated with emotional intelligence. Mentoring gives us opportunities to practice our listening skills and communication skills, to increase our self-awareness, to build bridges and find commonalities. And with that, mentoring success requires clear communication. One thing that, that can help 
with mentor matches, especially in the beginning, is that meta conversation. So talking about talking. How are we going to communicate? How frequently are we going to communicate? But also diving a little bit deeper and talking about the type, the the way that you, um, what you bring to the mentor relationship that you hope to get out of it. So some some people come into mentoring hoping to be able to be an advisor, and they come to the conversation and they want to give suggestions for problem solving, and that can create um, an opportunity for conversation because if the mentee is coming really looking for someone who can provide active listening, listen to the, them and help them um, or allow them to come up with their own opinion or decision, then that is a place that conflict can happen. So being able to talk at the beginning of a mentoring relationship about not only the practical way of when of whether you'll have a Zoom or a phone call, whether you're meet in person or um, email more, all of those things are part of making those early decisions about mentoring, but also it's it's important to talk about your why in mentoring and really to bring it down to a um, a more basic level regarding what you're hoping. I mean, I guess it's not basic, it's deeper um, regarding the why that you're here. And some of you are here because we literally um, asked you and said, we pick you. Um, and so your motivation may be, um, may just be that you're there to help. And that's fine, um, but communicating that with and to one another is important. With that, that leads into our fourth tip is mentoring success is based in developing a shared purpose. So in addition to deciding how and when to talk, it's important to develop shared purpose. So talking about your why, Again, it doesn't have to be deep. It might just be learning how to network um, or understanding the job search process. I know we've talked to some who they already know what job that they have, but they're a little bit worried about when those questions come about health insurance or life insurance or how do you set up a 401k and those types of things. Or it might simply be I'm moving to grad I'm moving into graduate school at the same you know I'm going to stay at Ball State and how do I move from being a student into being more of a colleague role with um, folks who I was a student with before so helping to understand what those bigger purposes are for mentoring and what you're wanting to get out of it de developing that shared goal um, will help you have a successful mentor match. And I want to remind our mentors, it's okay for you to have a goal. All of our relationships have some measure of exchange in them. And I think it's beneficial and helpful to share with your mentee, or if a mentor isn't here, mentees, ask your mentor what they get out of this. It's, a, it's helpful, again, when we're thinking about that basic need of belonging, it's helpful for both parties in a mentor relationship to understand why the other person is there. And it helps give um, permission for that reach out and that connection. And five, mentoring success requires introspection and vulnerability. So all this thinking and all this meta communication, it does require some level of thinking beyond just our first thought of asking ourselves a little bit deeper questions and being able to be introspective as we ask questions, as we answer questions, again, both the mentor and mentee, allowing for that introspection, there is a level of vulnerability. And so a reminder that mentoring success requires that introspection and vulnerability, and those are both based in trust. And so Trust doesn't just develop because I've said that you're a mentee and mentor match. Um, it develops as you build clear communication and develop that shared purpose. And as you really honor that need for belonging and the humanity of one another. Okay, I said five, but I do have one bonus tip here that mentoring success requires asking for help if it isn't working. Again, we spend a lot of time and thought and put a lot of thought into our mentor matches, but we recognize sometimes pieces don't work. The communication might fall off. Um, and we just want to remind you that 
if it's not working, please ask for help. Um, that truly is part of my job. Um, and it's also part of Kate's job. So Kate and I work together on the mentoring programs. And um, if you don't feel comfortable or, or already have a relationship with Kate, you can feel feel free to reach out to her also. Um, we'll have our contact. I mean, our contact information is in our emails, but we'll also just drop it in the chat here for you as well. We have a few questions. Again, follow follow-ups, um, questions that we think are prompted from those five um, mentoring truths um, and ask you to reflect on these. I think it's always best to give you a few moments to reflect on the question. I hope you had good conversations. Um, I'm gonna, I have these two questions up, but honestly, I'm going to stop sharing because I just want to see your faces and let you see one another's faces. Um, how, um, let's just start with room one, I think is always the, kind of the best way to go. Um, how was the conversation? Was there anything that you learned and questions that remain? I think um, I really enjoyed getting to see the mentor side of things and like what this program means to them and what they're hoping to like contribute and like what they and how they see um, being a mentor is like an opportunity for like themselves and for us. I thought that that was because I haven't really considered this program for the mentor side. So seeing it from that angle was definitely very enlightening and good to know, like going forward within the like in the program. That's great. That's great. I think it's good from the mentor side as well, because everybody brings a different breadth of experience, um, you know, and depending on what the mentee needs, I, you know, it's nice to know there's other people that you could reach out to as well and just have that discussion about what the mentee might need going through another mentor to ask those kind of questions and make those connections as well. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. Don't feel um, don't feel constrained by the groups, but I'll call out group two if anyone wants to um, wants to share. But really, if anyone wants to share, feel free to fill the space. Yeah, I think it just was exciting to um, get to not only meet some of the other students that are part of the top one hundred, but also get to meet the mentor um, and just the. Uh, kind of like who he is and what he has to share. And I'm just looking forward to it. Sick. I liked that we talked about like where we're from and everything. So we realized that we're like all very close by where we like originally like lived and everything. It was really cool. Oh, that's great. I love when you find commonalities that you that are unexpected. I think that's part of the beauty of mentoring, really. Great. Anyone else to share? Let's see, group three. I I was really impressed with the the breadth of our alumni, the diversity, the uh, positive energy, and willingness to volunteer their time for our students. And I'm always super impressed with our students. So um, we, we had a great discussion on our, our call, I thought. That's fantastic. Yeah, I would agree. And I'll, I'll just, I was in Jennifer's group as well. And it went really well. And I would love hearing from the students and kind of where they are in their lives and, and kind of, you know, what they're looking for. And saw a lot of head nods when, you know, different things were said. And, and, you know, I think we're all um, here to help each other in whatever way that we can. All right, group four, anyone? The group, I mean, like I said, feel free to hop in if you're. Well, I can um, say I can... something. I, I was very <laughs> impressed with uh, 
people that have graduated, like Jan, who just graduated recently, to a guy like myself who graduated years ago. It's amazing, you know, the commonality, but at the same time, sort of that fresh perspective versus me kind of looking back uh, in terms of things that have worked. And uh, as I said, the last program, it, it's remarkable, some of these students, I mean, what they bring to the table and what they can offer once they get out into the workforce. So just as impressed this year as it was last year. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Well, any questions or any further comments before we just wrap up and share a few resources before we let you go? All right. Um, so just briefly here, a um, couple things to plug. So we do have one um, in-person opportunity that's upcoming. It's not until June, so we don't have all the full details yet, but on June 6th in Indianapolis, it'll be on the north side this year. Um, at five o'clock, there's the Cardinal Networking Forum. So that would be an opportunity for in-person if you're somewhere in the area. Details with that about that will come out in April. Um, shout out to Jaron, who's on the um, planning committee and Mike Early, who's been super involved. Appreciate your work on that. Um, there will be a, a two for one kind of discount that will come to our top 100 folks. Um, Kate's sharing in the chat the resources link. So we really encourage you to use Cardinals Connect. And um, I feel like I can call out Bill and Jennifer, both who were mentors last year about um, some of the, and Mike too, I guess there's a lot of you, but um, we, we will sometimes have a little bit of issues with the platform. Um, and so if you see things and you think I, that we're, you know, please feel free to share if there are glitches that you notice so that we can act on that very quickly. Um, like the one this weekend, um, a student had just simply accepted, <laughs> accepted the meeting invite and somehow Gmail and Microsoft did not like talking to each other and sent out a broadcast a message to a lot of us. So um, to no fault of anyone's, I'm, I don't think. So um, we're happy to, you know, we're all human here and, and are glad to be in human experience with one another. Um, Kate put the link to the resources and Cardinals Connect there. Um, I do want to point out that there's a, a calendar and that includes the dates for the milestones that are due. Um, also in that resources, sometimes um, finding the place where you mark your um, milestones do can, can feel a little hidden. And so there is within the top 100 group, there is a resource that gives you just a little quick tutorial on that, but always reach out. Um, I'm happy to help um, figure things out. And if you are one of the couple of few who one of your mentor pairs is not on Cardinals Connect yet, so you did not have one another's names yet, those will be going out this afternoon um, if you haven't already gotten those. I'm working my way through. So some have gone out, but um, a few of them have not for those who aren't fully on the platform as a pair yet. Um, Kate, am I missing anything? I don't believe so. We're just super excited to have all of you participate in this program again. Um, appreciate all of your help on both sides. Um, and then, Sue, I think you wanted to share some volunteer opportunities. I was going to post um, in, yes. those in the chat as well. Okay. So um, volunteer opportunity, particularly for our students that are on the call. Um, One Ball State Day is coming up, and I'm uh, Kate and I are, and Phelan and I are privileged to be on the team that um, hosts that with our PEC, our Student Philanthropy Council. Um, so two opportunities. I'll be manning the Top 100 booth um, that's on the plaza at Emmons, and so I believe all of you will have something. All the students will have some things to pick up that day. Um, so come see me between 11 and 2, and. On April the 4th, there's an opportunity um, to work with the gratitude team to film some videos. Um, and so if you're interested in that, I've got my colleague Brandon Clemens um, is organizing that and his email is in the chat. So please consider being a part of that. And I hope to get to meet you IRL soon. Um, thanks so much for being here today. We appreciate you being part of the program. 
And if you have further questions, feel free. I'll, I'll hang out for a few minutes. But thank you so much for being here today. And soon. Thank you.